are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yay! The sun is shining and temperatures are rising. Spring has finally arrived. It's time to throw open the windows and clean away that winter grime and germs. I'm Sarah Connor and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. My guest is Ann Wentz, owner of Blumenladen in Old Collinsville, Connecticut. And she is here with some fantastic, old-fashioned, tried and true, and all-natural cleaning products. And thanks for coming. I'm so excited to be here. So, these are the types of things that maybe our grandmothers used. Yes, these actually some of these recipes go back to the 16th century, and this one in particular was something that I came across in an old British country living magazine many years ago and thought I'm going to try this, and it was wonderful. And this was developed by Sir Hugh Pratt. Um, and he wrote a book in 1609 called Delights for Ladies. And it was recipes <laughs> for cleaning and how to, you the know, things different ladies things. ladies delight in, right? Uh, right, <laughs> cleaning, right. Cleaning, Cleaning and moth chasers and right, things like that. Right, right, right. So these are Tudor linen balls. And this is what women would make to clean spots off of their fine linens. So the, this is something that was used long before cleaning supplies exactly. went into the chemistry right. lab. Right. So all natural things you might right. be able to find in your home. Now this store. recipe has been updated to the 21st century by okay. Clary Levy who is a British gal who has a, um, a line of home natural cleaning products. Okay. So she updated these recipes so we can use them today because okay. when you read the old ones it's like what, what? was that? What was huh? that? <laughs> So what we've started with is... So these are called Tudor Ball. Tudor the, Balls. Yes, Tudor Linen Balls. Tudor Linen, linen balls. balls. And I can tell you already, they smell unbelievable. So, okay. what are we going to do? We are going to um, grate some soap, and I've used two soaps. I use a Fels Naphtha soap, which is okay. a laundry soap. This is what that bar looks like. And just a bar of ivory soap. Okay, okay. so you used both. I use both. Okay. You can use either or, or you can combine them. All, all right. right. And then you're going to use two lemons, and we're going to cut a lemon in half, and you're going to take the seeds out. Okay. I'm going to move this over okay. so you can see what you're doing. And you're going to cut this very, very, very finely. And so the, tiny, the rind and all. The rind and all. The everything. Teeny, teeny, tiny pieces. Teeny, okay. tiny little pieces. Okay. And just take your seeds off, and you're just going to keep going until it's all done. And we're going to add that to something that we've already pre-mixed, so it okay. won't take so much time. Okay. And then you're just going to take your grater, mm -hmm. and you're just going to grate your soap okay. Okay, into a bowl. Or so you grate the whole bar? The whole bar. The whole everything. bar. You both, grate the whole both bar. bars. Okay. Two bars, two lemons will give okay. you the right amount and the right consistency and to make And these are bulk. just standard size. These are just bars. standard size from the grocery store. And this is a fun old-fashioned package. It is. I love it. Yeah, That's it, it is. So this is the kind of, either mm -hmm. this or ivory. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And so you're we've grated two bars. We've, we've cut two lemons. Two lemons. And as you can see, I've started. Because it takes a little bit of elbow grease. I'm going to this up a little bit longer. So, so this is the mix. Is this almost done? It's almost done. This is almost done. So you're going to use the mortar and pestle. Right. If okay. you don't have that at home, you can use an old-fashioned potato masher, a wooden potato masher, okay. in a good sturdy bowl. Okay. You know, it doesn't and have to be this. Smush, 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 you just smush, 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 smush it. Smush. Yeah. Could you use a um, a food processor? Food processor? Would that you work? You know, I don't know. I haven't tried it, but there's okay. something so primal and yes. wonderful. <laughs> About this is doing like what the this. king's ladies yes, used it, to do to is. make their Tudor linen balls. It is. <laughs> and it gets like almost the consistency of peanut butter. And it takes a bit of elbow grease. It probably takes a good 10 minutes of mashing 
to get everything to the right consistency there so you can roll it into a so ball. So you can kind of see it's like a paste. It is a paste. A pasty right. consistency. And if you feel like it isn't quite wet enough, you can pick it up and squeeze it. And if it doesn't form a ball, you can add a little bit more lemon. If okay. it's too wet, then you add more soap powder to right. get the right consistency. So the lemon is what gives you the moisture. Exactly. To you make don't it add anything else. Okay. Um, in and the it way really of liquid. smells so good. It smells really it good. Smells really and then I'm going good. to add just a tablespoon of alum to this. And this is just, this that's a natural mineral salt. It's used okay. in um, lots of different things. It's used in deodorants, it's used in pickling processes, and it's a mm. natural occurring mineral salt. So if you use it in pickling, it's. Yes, you know, it's safe. You can, it's, it's safe. safe. <laughs> yeah. You can eat it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Okay. And preserves. It's used in preserves okay. and lots of different kinds of um, cosmetic things mm -hmm. and okay. deodorant. So I think we've got a good paste okay. going there. So we've got some paste going. Right. And we brought gloves because this yep. is kind of a messy thing. It is thing, a messy right? thing. So we're going to put now our gloves on. Now it's not going to hurt your skin, but just no. for the sake of us keeping our hands clean for our next product, we're going to use gloves. Exactly. At home, you don't have to if you don't want to. It doesn't, it's not damaging to your skin. No. Okay. So now what do we do? Okay. Now. I'm ready. Are you? <laughs> Doctor, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. We're going to take this out and just okay. scrape this. It's almost like a cake mixture or a biscuit mixture. And we're just going to grab a good handful. Okay. And we're going to roll it into a, okay. a you soap can ball. See, you can see the chunks of the lemon rind and... And it, and, just smells smells heavy. Heavy. Yeah, it just smells heavy. Yeah, just smell. Just roll it and roll. So Doesn't it smell good? And about that size, about two inches across. And then you're just going to set them on your wax paper. Okay, so just like a little, not quite a tennis ball, bigger than a golf ball. A meatball size. Meatball. <laughs> healthy meatball. A healthy, healthy meatball, meatball size. Healthy meatball size, okay. Okay. And you're going to let these dry for about two weeks. Two weeks, okay. But, you know, a week and a half, two weeks, depending upon the weather, if it's really moist, you know. Okay. So how do you know if they're ready? They get really hard. Okay. So they, they should be hard. They should be hard. Yeah. Okay. This is actually really easy to put these together. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just go right. They, it doesn't take much work at no. all. No. And you want to turn them occasionally so they don't get a flat pot spot on them. Okay. So, so as they're drying over every couple of days. Right. Just, just turn, turn them. them. Check on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, right. and then what if you happens, can hand me that jar. So here we have some that are in various already stages. Done. Done already and done. Dried. Okay. And this is one that was done about two weeks ago, and you can feel how hard that is. Okay. So this one's completely done. That one's completely so done and ready to use. I don't know if you can hear that. Sounds hard. It sounds hard. It is hard. Okay. So it's the sound yeah. test. Okay. So and this, is this hard. one was done about three days ago. So you can feel that it's drying out. It's not as moist as that, but it's not dry enough to use yet. So. Right. It's a little bit firmer. It's but a if little you bit firmer, on but it, you yeah. can hear that it's not quite as dry. Yeah. It doesn't make the noise. So we've got done. Not done. Done. Bud. <laughs> Bud is the not Bud. done. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this no. is the finished. This is the finished product. Okay. Now, when you want to go to use yeah, that. So how do we use this? Okay. Now that we have them, we keep our beautiful jar in the mm -hmm. laundry and you can, room. I just keep a jar of them like this. Mm -hmm. And as the, it goes down, you make more. They, they really last for a long time. Okay. So you just want to wet your stain with a little bit of water. Okay. So this has a little bit of a dirty, right. a dirt smudge. Mm -hmm. And you're going to wet your ball. Okay. Let's put Get it nice and wet. Okay. And you're just going to rub your spot okay. with a linen ball. Look at that. Shoot, we should have showed the stain because now <laughs> it's gone. There really was a stain there, There I really swear. was a stain there. Okay, and you're going to let that sit for about two minutes on there. Okay, so you can see, I mean, it's, it, it's a little sudsy, but not really mm -hmm. too much. And um, then you're going to rinse this in warm water and wash in your machine, machine as you normally Now, what do. if you forget and you leave it on there? Will the lemon 
No. Bleach it no. or anything? I wouldn't um, leave it, you know, for days or anything, but, okay. you know, if okay. you leave it for a half hour or something like that, okay. then it should be And fine. then, so now this is wet, what do we do with it? Stick it back on the wax paper and dry it out again. Okay, so just dry it out. So Don't put it in this jar. No. No, okay. just let it dry before you put it back, and you can use it over and over again. Until it, just it doesn't really have a shelf life. Okay. Okay, it lasts, you know, for years because of the lemon being, you know, a, a preservative. Right. Right, and okay. the alum also. So That's they last fantastic. forever. That's fantastic. So these are Tudor linen balls, balls, and going back to the 15th century. Right. That's mm -hmm. that's great. Okay, what do we have next? Well, we have something very for magical silver, for right? silver. Oh, and this is magic. Yes, this I is, forgot to mention we brought some is, magic today, too. We did. So Anne told me we were going to do some silver polishing. So I went into my drawers, silver drawer, drawers with silverware, and found all sorts of cute little really tarnished baby rattles mm -hmm. <laughs> that haven't been used for a very long time. But nonetheless, it would be nice to have them polished. Right. So, um, so what are we going to do well, yeah. this is something that I think it's been around for a long, long time, and it's so easy, and it, it really is magical. If we were doing this 350 years ago in Salem, we would be burned at the stake oh. because this really is <laughs> a magic craft. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a practical magic kind wow, of thing. Wow, that's amazing. So okay. we're going to fill our container oops, oops, a little bit with hot water. Okay. I have taken... We have soap somewhere, too. Oh, yeah. there we go. Okay. Now we've got okay. everything. All right. I've taken just a plastic container like this. All you right. don't want to use anything metal, all right? Okay, so no metal containers. No, and if you're going to use an old aluminum dish like this, you're not going to use it for cooking again. So just keep it for this purpose. Okay, okay. Because okay. okay. it does have a chemical reaction. All right. So we're going to pour... This is just plain tin foil, though. Just tin foil, shiny side up. Okay, tin foil, shiny side up in a special container that you dedicate to this... Two. Process. Right, exactly, because okay. it is a chemical reaction. I All think right. that should be enough. And this and water is, this isn't super hot, but it needs to be yeah, at least Yeah, it needs to be warm. Warm yeah, to the warm touch. To and this is Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. And we're just going to sprinkle that in there. Okay, now while and you're mixing that, I'm going to hold this up because this, I tried to find this, and this is actually... This is what the box looks like. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking right. for. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's almost the size of a dish washing, a dish detergent box. Mm -hmm. But you just found it in the supermarket in the regular. Right, um, with, with the Tide and the bleach. The Tide and, and the bleach and all that stuff. All the so this, laundry it, detergent. It's not Arm & Hammer laundry detergent. It's no. Arm & Hammer super Bur washing soda. soda. Okay. okay. Now, I've done this in big tubs you know, really large yes. tubs. Okay. If I'm doing my silver punch bowls, if you're doing mm -hmm. a lot of silver, you can do it all at the same time. You can just dump it all in there. Just dump it all in there. Okay. All right. So. So now this is, this is where you want to get a really good look. Okay. I'm going to hold it up. Okay. Because I'm really excited about this. <laughs> I think this is very fun. So let's get a shot of how tarnished this is. Okay. This is a really, really tarnished silver Christmas ball. You okay. can see it's almost it's, coppery yeah. in color. Right. And what you do is you just hold it in there, or just put it in there. Okay. The whatever you're doing has got to touch the aluminum foil. Okay. Okay. And it has a chemical Whoa. reaction with. Can you smell it? Can you smell the chemical reaction happening? I'm still smelling the lemon tuber okay. ball. <laughs> And it happens very, very quickly, and you can see that the tarnish is gone. Oh my God! It really is a magical thing. And the fantastic thing is, is you're not scrubbing. And you're scrubbing not scrubbing. It gets into stinky. all the, the nooks and crannies. Yep. And it's wonderful if you're doing all your silverware. You yeah, know, you just, can just get a put big it all tub, in a tub, put it in. That's it. That's fantastic. Now, we have gloves on, but you don't really need to have gloves well, on, do you, or should it, you? Well, it has a chemical reaction, so you it want does. to be gentle okay. to your hands. All but. right. So um, Now, see, I just saw that go. I Isn't put this it? in here, and Mickey just turned silver, and he was black. So, yeah, I, I wish we got that on camera. <laughs> I swear, I'm and telling the truth. It, it is, Our infomercial it, says right. that it just miraculously it cleans, cleans 
It yes. really does. Isn't that amazing? So it's just tin foil. There you go. Shiny side up. Yes, now this is nice and clean. Yeah. Um, tin foil, shiny yeah. side up, Arm & Hammer Timber Super Washing soda. soda, which is a natural product. Right. It's not, mm -hmm. there's no chemicals in it. Right. But it does create a chemical reaction. With the aluminum foil. Now look at that rattle. It's nice and nice and clean. You don't have that silver polish. Right getting stuck in the nooks mm -hmm. and crannies of right. your silver and then you just you can't even though it's not tarnished anymore um, you can see the back of Mickey is nice and clean this is I could just do this for the rest of the show I know. let's just clean all my silver <laughs> instant gratification see, I mean you can see it's all it really is instant gratification it's very 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 cool um, so now you have another polishing method for copper. I do. Which isn't different than this. It is. Okay, I have two things that I do to polish my copper. I cook with copper all the time. Okay. And say you're doing something with spaghetti sauce okay. that evening. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to clean your copper. Um, with your spaghetti sauce? Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be interesting. And it could, <laughs> be, it could be either spaghetti sauce or spaghetti paste. Okay. And while I have some... So this is tomato paste. This is tomato paste. Okay. So you're just going to leave it on there. Okay. The other thing that you can use is you can use... Cut a lemon and right. use your sea salt, fine sea salt, and you're going to dip your lemon into the okay. sea salt. this to the side. It's just a natural way, very easily, of cleaning your copper that doesn't have any bad fumes and it doesn't that's, reach you up. Know, that's the thing, copper cleaners, they all stink, oh. which you know means that there's nasty exactly. stuff in there, even exactly. though it, do, you know, it does work. Um, and this is so cheap, a lemon it's a, a and A lemon salt. and sea salt so or inexpensive. tomato sauce. Or now tomato the tomato sauce. sauce has to sit on there a few minutes. Okay, so um, let's set this aside. Let's set it aside. We're going to let this cure and we're going to be back with another cleaning solution right. while we wait for our copper to clean. So while we're waiting for our copper to clean, you have something else to show me. I do. This is a surface cleaner, and okay. I'm going to start with a basic surface cleaner and then show you how to boost it up. All right. Um, so surface cleaner just meaning tables, countertops, ta countertops, mirrors? your sinks. Not good for mirrors. Not mirrors. Not okay, mirrors. No mirrors. Um, your stove tops, refrigerator. Okay. Does a great job. And basically, all this is this is two cups of water and um, a half a cup of vinegar. Okay. Now to beef it up a little bit more, what we're going to do is we're going to add a teaspoon of borax. Now borax, I was reading a book about you know, natural cleaning and organic cleaning, and borax does a lot of great things. It does. Ants don't like it. If you have no. ants, they won't no. cross the borax if you sprinkle it around. Laundry booster. Laundry booster. It's fantastic. Yep, so this is borax. So we added a teaspoon of borax. We added a teaspoon of borax. And we're Two just cups of water. Half a cup of half vinegar. Half a cup of vinegar. Right. Teaspoon of borax. Right. And we're going to shake, gonna shake, it shake up. that up. And that is just a great surface cleaner for all your countertops. Okay. And easy, inexpensive, mm -hmm. and you can make it, you know, from what you have in your kitchen. Now, if you want to use um, a surface cleaner for your bathrooms, especially your shower stalls and your bathtubs, Okay. Um, this is a wonderful additive. This is a natural uh, tea tree essential oil. All right. And we're going to add about 15 drops of the tea tree oil okay. to that. So it's more than just a scent. You're, it's it's more, adding something else in there. It is. And it is a natural um, ingredient. It smells that, good. It does. That fights yeah. mold and mildew. Okay. So you just want to shake that up really, really well, right. and then spray your tiles and your tub, okay. and it'll prevent the mildew. So the tea tree oil is good for the bathroom, prevents mold and mildew. mildew. Could you use it for other surfaces, yes, even sure. if you weren't worried Absolutely. about mold and mildew? Yeah. Okay, so you okay. could still do countertops. Yeah. Exactly. If you're worried about using it on granite, um, I would test a little area, but a rule of thumb for any surface cleaners on granite okay. is if you spray your mitt and not your granite and then wipe with your mitt or your sponge. So you're going to okay. spray the, the, so the surface be, cleaner. Let's demonstrate. <laughs> it would be like spraying, is this on? We're going to try and demonstrate here. There we go. Ah, oh no, I 
can't demonstrate. Oh, no, there we there go. We okay. Go. <laughs> so you spray mm -hmm. and then wipe. And then wipe. And we did make a mess. So this is good that we're doing it, this. It, absolutely. So you just, so and if you want to protect your mm -hmm. granite, that's And it has a nice do. aroma to it. It does. It smells wonderful. That's great. So this is good for fighting mold and mildew. Mold and mildew. And vinegar surfaces. in and of itself is a good disinfectant, it is. right? It is. Yeah. Right. So that's great. If you and want it's it, cheap. It's pennies. Really cheap. Pennies. Yeah. Pennies. I mean, it's amazing right. when you think how much you spend to buy a bottle of cleaner. Sure. And you can just make this. And when you actually read the ingredients, a lot of what you're buying is water. Yeah, of course. Yeah. At, well, and then if you don't want the chemicals, right. you're buying mm -hmm. things you don't want. Yeah. So And I great. just save my old spray bottles that I've used, mm -hmm. you know, or you... you you're out of something, you know, and right. I use the old bottles, That's wash them out is. really, really well. And, and my, use my them again. solution. <laughs> <laughs> my solution to all my problems. Love it. Um, but this is a reused bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you're going in, as you're trying to get rid of your old stuff, right. you can reuse Recycle the your spray your bottles. Just clean them out well before yep. you use them. That's right. great. Yep. Do, do you think our copper is ready? I think the copper okay. is ready. Well, let's, let's see how our copper did. Okay. So we were waiting for the tomato paste right. to work. Don't you have that? Yeah. I'm just going to... So wait, let's just show. Okay, so we right just here. smeared it on. And I... We're just wiping it. Yeah, here, let's do a little surface cleaner just for a moment. And we're going to use our surface cleaner. How convenient. But you can see where right. the right. sauce... Right, you can see where the sauce was. And let's it just, just takes it right off. Up. You can see the circle. That's great. Yeah. And now you're saying it's safe if you have a copper bowl to put your tomato mm -hmm. sauce in there, yeah. and it's still safe to eat the tomato sauce. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You want the bowl to be clean on the inside, of course. Right, but obviously, yeah. yeah. Right. But right. it has that chemical reaction that just cleans your copper without any of the harmful right. chemicals. That's and great. And does a great job. And again, so cheap. So cheap. I love it. Natural and cheap. <laughs> Natural and cheap. <laughs> now you, something else that you brought, um, which I'm excited about because this winter I pulled out a bunch of wool sweaters and there were holes. So I don't know. I mean, if you're not familiar with what a moth hole looks like, they're not that big sometimes, but they can just ruin a sweater. So I don't know if we can get a shot of this. But So this is a sweater with, it's like the moth just came by and decided, I'm just going to take a little nibble and ruin your sweater and move on. And it's a polo sweater. And it's so frustrating. I know. Mm -hmm. I did get yeah. it at the outlets. Mm -hmm. But I, I was mad. <coughs> and that, a few of them that happened. Right. Yeah. So you have a natural moth chaser I do. mix. Now this goes back centuries also and it okay. really does work and it smells wonderful. It smells good versus exactly. mothballs which smell, well I don't want to say they smell like grandma, but right. they smell they like do. maybe grandma's attic. Right, Yeah. exactly. Which is, which, okay. you know, mothballs are not a so nice smell. Okay. okay, so what are we going to do here? We are going to start with cedarwood chips. And you can get these at the pet store. This is what they use for hamster bedding. And so you cedar can, chips. Cedar yeah. chips. You can get a huge bag very inexpensively. Right. And that is our base that we're going to be working okay. with. Okay. So you just took a bunch of handfuls. Right. Okay. No, you don't have to measure. You really you don't. don't. Okay. No, you don't you have to measure. You just want to have a mixture no. of the scents. When you're okay. making potpourri, anything like that, you really don't have to measure. Okay. Yeah. There, are, you know, there's nothing that is going to change by adding a little bit more or less. Right. Lavender also is a wonderful moth chaser. I love lavender. Oh, it's wonderful. Lavender is fabulous for lots of different things, for sleep pillows. Mm -hmm. um, it's edible. You can cook with it. It's, mm -hmm. it's just wonderful. And it really does scare the moths away. It smell, it's, I wish you could smell because already it smells so good. Okay. This is next? lemon peel, just Dried, dried lemon peel. Dried lemon okay. peel. They don't now like all that. of these things. So your store out in, in Collinsville, mm -hmm. we should mention, you carry all of these I things. I do. So um, you can easily buy the ingredients. You can, or I store, have it or already or made up that you can buy by the mugful. You just buy it by the mugful. Okay. But yes, if you, you have a bunch of jars, exactly. all laid out mm -hmm. with pre-mixed solutions. Right. Or you we have get. all the ingredients to make your yes. own. And I highly recommend you take a trip out to Collinsville Thank because you. her shop is great. It's and beautiful. These are just cinnamon chips. Okay. You get cinnamon sticks. I put them in um, like a plastic Ziploc bag and just whack them with a hammer. So that's fun. You can have your that's kids easy. do that. Or we sell them. Right, you, know, you can buy them. We of sell course. them in bags. But. Yep. And then whole cloves. Okay. 
And you just mix all these ingredients together. Okay, I'm going to hold that up. So right. here's our mixture. Mm-hmm. It smells really good. Doesn't that smell good? It does smell good. Mmm. Okay. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to add our essential oil and our fixative. When you're okay. working and making any kind of potpourri, you need a fixative. A lot of things um, that you're going to be using for pot potpourri making don't have a scent to them. You're using okay. them for aesthetics, so things look good. Where you might right. be adding petals of flowers, where they're going they to add, they don't have a scent. They don't have a scent. Okay. So, what so you even with this, which is super fragrant, right. you still need to do this. Yes, it okay. helps. It helps. It helps. Okay. Right. Now, I'm using a fixative, and you can either use corn cob chips. Now, these have been commercially dried and cut up, okay. or you can use orris root, cut, not powder. Orris root, orris root. Orris root. O r r i s is a fixative. Okay. And you're going to apply your oil to your fixative. And this is a cedar wood oil. Okay. So here's our fixative. Right. This is the corn. And you, you shouldn't do this yourself, you said, because you could get bugs or. Like right. you should buy the. the you, you should buy the commercially. Professionally made exactly. yeah. corn cob chopped Chip. up chips. Right. Okay. And I'm just going to drop my oil onto the corn cob chips. So you don't want it on the other ingredients, nope. you want it on the corn cob What's chips. happening, okay. and I use just a stick or something just to rub this around okay. so all the different little kernels are getting coated with okay. the oil. Now what's going to happen is that the... And what was the scent that you put in? This is cedarwood. Cedarwood, okay. You could add lavender to that, you could add lemon to it, Okay. but for for right now, I think the cedar wood is, is perfect. And moths, we know, you know, there are cedar closets to prevent exactly. moths, so that cedar right. wood So this goes sense. back a long, long okay. way, and it's a proven... Uh, okay. recipe. So I'm just stirring this around to make okay. sure that all the, the little chips are getting coated by the oil. Okay. Now what that does is that draws the oil in okay. like a sponge. And then once you have all those okay. little chips coated, then you just stir it into your... You don't have to wait for it to dry. Nope. You stir it in. No, you just okay. stir it in. And what I like to do is I like to put it in a jar okay. or an old crock that you're not going to be using again for cooking. If you don't have either of those, a big Ziploc bag works great. Okay. You can just put all this in a Ziploc bag or a crock mm -hmm. that you can put a lid on, let it sit for about a week, and I call it cooking. It really isn't cooking, but okay. what is happening is um, the oil is permeating all okay. of your ingredients, which adds okay. you know, a more of a scent. And then now, once it's done... <clears throat> once it's done... Quickly, before we run out of time, done. what do we do with it? <laughs> okay. You can do, do you have your scissors? I, I do. Where did my scissors go? I have my scissors right here. Uh-oh. Here. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. You can get little bouquet garni bags. Okay. Like this. And just fill it up. And just fill it up. Okay. And put these among your sweaters. So you could just hang it on a hanger with your sweaters. Exactly. Or you could hang it on. And you want to do several of them in your, in okay. your closet. Um, if you're crafty and you sew, you can make like little flat, almost like um, pot holder t type oh, right, things right. with this in it, it, and then you can layer right. it in your sweaters. woolen oh, sweaters or your blankets. Smell. It smells really Look. good. And you can also purchase little, um, sh uh, little sachet bags right. like this. If you're really thrifty, you, you don't want to do that. But I love this idea. And then <laughs> <laughs> this is our this is our last thing. It's pantyhose. Okay, so you have pantyhose. So you want to cut, oh, cut that right there. Cut that there. And then okay. fill it up. Fill it up. And if you're not giving it as gifts, you want to you're all do fill the it. Head. Now, um, we're almost out of time, so I do want to just mention, again, your shop is in Old Collinsville. It's called Bloom and Laden. And if anyone has any questions, they can call the shop. Yes. Okay, they can call the shop. We'll have the number on the screen. And you have all the ingredients for this as well as regular potpourri. Absolutely. I will have the recipes for the different things we did on my website, which is um, sarahconnor.net. And I will have a little link to um, the green spring cleaning recipes mm -hmm. that we did today. So that's pretty Not sexy. Not the <laughs> <laughs> Look like a sausage. <laughs> but it works. If but you're it not giving work. it as gifts. And right. And all of this is, it smells delicious, yes. it's fresh, it's natural, it's inexpensive. And it gives you a satisfaction yes. of making your own making things. Making your own. Thank and you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure. This was so great. You have been watching Life in Style with Sarah. I hope you've gotten a few ideas of how to brush away winter out of your house and bring some spring fresh scents in.
Um, if you do want more information about the recipes we did, you can go to my website or you can call um, and ask for Anne at Blumenladen. Thanks for watching. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah, and don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode.